holler if you hear me, and welcome to this edition of Luke Covers. Because as DC gets more time in the limelight as the supreme punchline of Hollywood, due to the failure of The Flash in its couple of first weeks, and how now it is making the James Gunn reboot look revolting by association, oh no, how much worse can it get? Marvel Studios has now found a new way today to stand up and be counted as the true supreme joke of all jokes in the crumbling entertainment industry. Even just a tangential association with Marvel is now enough to lead to some kind of faltering. Since now it's also been said that Sony seems to arbitrarily, if you ask me, want to go and uh, delay the release for the Across the Spider-Verse sequel, and that is a movie that is actually doing very well financially. It's the movie that is now past $500 million against a $100 million budget, making it like a traveling indie band that's able to turn a better profit margin in its touring and in the cost of touring by comparison to some giant inflated vapid pop act that has so much advertising, so many other variables and responsibilities, and so many other things on stage with setting up a stage, needing to fill out all these giant stadiums they're into, having all these backup dancers, all these other guests, and all this other hype going around it, while you've got the other group that comparatively so is just four guys on stage with their instruments and they come for the music, not for everything else. So then the people who drop their money on that ticket are having a much better time, more entertaining musical act time with that act that is really more focused on the act instead of all these other things. And, well, you're going to be seeing a lot more of that focusing on all the wrong things with Marvel than you're going to be seeing anything over at Sony. You know, give or take the Craven trailer or two, because Marvel's latest upcoming bomb, I mean movie, the, the Marvels, well, it turns out that it is now subject to a Reddit post alleging to have leaked what the post-credits scene is going to be. Now... This really just uh, reminds me of something that I've always thought about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The whole idea of the post credit scene in general and really making it so important to your movie. I mean, this is something from the very beginning. If a scene after the end credits is the prime reason for seeing the movie, then why don't you just stay home and just watch the scene online when someone inevitably uploads the scene to YouTube after filming it on their phone? A glorified trailer for the next movie does not an entertaining movie make. Now, of course, with Iron Man really establishing that, that and the early MCU films, they were actually successful and beloved because they had other things going on in them that were memorable and really brought in the audience besides the whole, oh, then you have to sit there. They expect you to sit there like a lemming until you get maybe 20 seconds of extra footage that's going to bring something else. Unless, of course, it's an occasional little swerve like the Gardens of the Galaxy post credit scene just being one big little random Howard the Duck appearance, and then that's it, with no other real sense or need for it other than a little sight gag to show you just how full of themselves Marvel had become, where a notorious bomb like Howard the Duck, oh, we can flaunt that all over our scene, and we know you'll go see it, because, well, you're uh, a lemming and we're Marvel. That kind of condescension I've never liked. But the cinematic universe now is definitely passed into a residency in Las Vegas. So everything has become a half-focused photocopy of what made it cool. So post credit scenes now get a more focused creative direction with less arbitrary studio changes to them, as opposed to the ever-so-witless tripe that we are subjected to from Marvel Studios, where anything from Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania to God knows whatever that garbage that has been on Disney Plus or will be coming to Disney Plus is ever going to be. So what are we doing here? That's actually a lot more people are asking that question. And if anything, it really is igniting my respect for humanity. It's really validating the idea that no, moviegoers, just people, the citizenry in general is nowhere near as stupid or as inferior to the invincible minds of Hollywood as they think that people in Hollywood really think they are. They're not really that. Because Iron Man went into filming with an unfinished script, as it was reported at the time, and now every movie they've made since then feels like that, times a billion. Or that times the money Disney's lost at the box office this past year, according to Valiant Renegade. So with this alleged post credit scene, what are we going to be getting? This, this credit scene that is so exciting that audiences will have no choice but to go see this film 
and begin putting Disney on the right financial track to get their studio and get all their profits back up and back up and back up on top so that they start actually really earning instead of just getting out of less, less debt. The massive billion plus net loss from Disney Plus every quarter now strategically going down. So now they can actually start turning a profit. What is this they're going to do? What is the amazing perfection we are going to see in this uh, post credit scene for the Marvels? What is it? Kamala Khan, patient zero for Marvel Comics' descent into the House of Ideologues, beats Kate Bishop, the gender-swapped Hawkeye played by an actress who has one foot on the right path in, in her career and another foot going off a cliff, mention when they meet each other that there's another smug, personality-free girl boss in the form of Ant-Man's daughter, and that they should find her to form an Avengers team made entirely of Brie Larson's. As long as they don't interfere with Brie Larson's limelight, because for all of her notorious talk of that press junket about how a recall in time was not meant for 40-year-old white dudes, so those 40-year-old white dude film critics should not be talking about the film, except when then Hollywood Reporter and Vanity uh, Variety and Vanity Fair start talking about the rumored on-set arguments she was having with uh, Monica Rambeau's actress. Yeah, so much for how much she wanted to see black women in her movies. Turns out that women like that tend to not really practice what they preach. But then again, Hollywood lives to not practice what they preach, especially at Disney. They are ground zero for that kind of stuff. That's why I would laugh in their face all the time if they weren't so insidious and insipid and arrogant in what it is that they do and the social engineering that they plan on trying to engage in. But now we see that the DEI executive there, the one who was all smug and full of herself about the not-so-secret agenda, well, now she's gone. So there's another one biting the dust, just like Victoria Alonso, and just like Leslie Headland has gone towards. And yeah, there's another one of those that's just being reported as a rumor right now. But yeah, come on. These days now, when it comes to something that's being leaked on Reddit or something that's being leaked somewhere else, when it comes to Disney, it's less likely a rumor and more likely something that is out there, but that has not been verified yet. But, you know, it's the internet. It is uncensorable, no matter how far that the world is going to try and control it. So yeah, much like what happened with the recent uh, discussions of rumors of what happened in the Flash movie that was leaked on Reddit early, getting verified when the film came out, you know that really is the post credit scene with the Marvels right here. Because if you want another little proof of that, just... Uh, Look at all this stuff and how badly it's falling apart. It reminds me of how Kate Bishop actress Haley Steinfeld is also a part of Marvel's self-immolation by way of social justice, while at the same time she is on the right side of Marvel by being the voice of Gwen Stacy in the Across the Spider-Verse movies. Yes, those movies that were so comparatively well-received with making money and winning Oscars with smaller budgets that Kevin Feige looks at their success over at Sony like a poor boy looking through the window of a toy store around Christmas time. But modern Hollywood being modern Hollywood, any millennial actress is forced into a fem scold role if they want a career. So for all of the wise choice, it being Spider-Gwen, she's gotta be a part of the gender swapping of the MCU as Nerd Roddick very accurately, accurately put it, because he is a very accurate man in that way. He a natural man, that way. hit me. And rem all of this also, in comparing this stuff to the Brie Larson stuff, it's uh, a little bit of another major reminder. It's a matter of how some actresses gravitate to them easier than others, like Brie Larson. Look back at her much superior role as Envy in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World for confirmation that there's no such thing as bad actors, just badly used actors. If only Marvel could see all these characters would fit better as villains. Everyone from this to a She-Hulk to the Miss Marvel to Monica Rambeau to the what they've done with the Scarlet Witch, all are prime examples of how in superhero movies recently and in modern Marvel comics that we have these quote-unquote superhero characters being written and portrayed by people who identify with villains. Just look at it. They're arrogant, vindictive, believe they're perfect, believe they're superior to everyone that doesn't think like them or submit to them, and punish all who stand in their way to third-way feminist supremacy. And if you found, if you follow that thread of thinking, then you really get to see clearly what's going on in Hollywood and see them as a hive mind of villains who think themselves as heroes. But what happens to villains? What happens to a villain at the end of the story? They fail. 
Hence Disney's financial cratering, the WGA strike, and the impending Screen Actors Guild strike. All from the people who can't stop screaming about how middle America is so out of touch, and they're all just a bunch of anachronisms that need to be removed. Coming from these people in Hollywood, okay, and people in middle America, they're not the ones that think superhero movies are still cool, and that anybody actually watches late night talk shows and watches them to be lectured, all right? Turns out you're wrong and they're right. And that's not my opinion. I know I'm right. So I want to thank you all for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Check that you're still subscribed if you're a returning viewer. And remember, the way to support my channel is to become a member with the first link or shop in my art store with the second link. In my store, you'll see posters for 200 color art for 30 pen and ink art for 25 sketchbooks for 25 and trading cards for 10 You'll see I also have color commissions for 60 pen and ink commissions for 50 trading card commissions for only 20 and any commission or purchase just has a flat $5 shipping and handling fee. Don't forget, you can also donate in my store. And when you donate in my store, that money goes immediately directly to me and any denomination is accepted. So if you want to buy my work or commission me from outside of America, you'd have to make your purchase as a donation. Just add up what you want in US dollars with another 25 US for the international shipping and handling fee and your items will ship immediately. So until then, thank you. And remember, felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you, space cowboy.